Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. As the breeding season for early lambing and pedigree flocks is starting, we're joined by Professor David Kenny, the head of the Animal Bioscience Department in Chagas, to discuss various aspects of synchronisation in yews. David explains the role of sponging and PMSG in the synchronisation process and the protocol used and the timing of ram introduction and how that can have an impact on fertility. David highlights the importance of the correct yule ram ratio and we discuss some strategies to deal with this at a practical level. We finish up discussing how the rate of PMSG use can impact on litter size and what impact you prolificity and the time of season has on the response rate we get. David starts off, however, explaining the pros and cons of synchronization in sheep. The role of synchronization in sheep really would say is it, it does two things. Essentially, at this time of the year, which is you know early in the season, would say for most for yours and most breeds, it induces uh, the yews to come on heat, would say, which allows obviously mating and, and um, you know, and the production would say of lambs out of season, which would typically be, would say, you know, if, if for example, if you if yours are mated next Saturday, would say, um, the those yours would say will be due around the first of January. The second thing, obviously, would say synchronization by the as the name suggests, it it brings together, would say, the the heats would say of a bunch of yours at the same time to facilitate mating a large bunch of sheep, you know, essentially on the same day, you know. So obviously we'll say that tightens up dramatically, we'll say the lambing spread in those flocks that use the, the uh, technology. Um, and, you know, once those flocks are set up for, for that, it can gr- grossly reduce, um, I suppose, the, uh, the duration of lambing, we'll say, and, in, and equally we'll say uh, increases the, um, or shortens the sale pattern, we'll say, of those lambs as well, tightens up essentially, we'll say, the group of lambs that you have so as a, as a consequence, then that can reduce maybe labour, we'll say, and also the, the necessity maybe to have different weaning dates or groupings, we'll say, of, of sheep throughout the year. Certainly it's going to be in focus at the moment for early lamb producers, indeed pedigree flocks. David, maybe just at a very basic level, can you explain to us how you know, sponging works and the role of PMSG in that synchronisation programme? Yes, Kieran. So essentially with the sponging, the sponge, would say, is essentially a sponge impregnated with um, progesterone. So progesterone would say is the hormone that regulates the, the normal heat cycle in the sheep and equally it's produced would say during pregnancy. So that essentially what you're doing would say with the uh, sponge and with the, with the progesterone um, hormone is that you're preventing would say the sheep from coming on heat on their own. So you're really controlling their heat cycle. And also would say in yours that are not cycling normally would say at this time of the year, you know, it helps to induce would say um, heat in those in those yews. So the PMSG then is a horm- is 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 a hormone as the name s- suggests is pregnant mares serum gonadotrophin. It's actually extracted, we'll say, from the blood of pregnant uh, horses, um, and it's very rich, we'll say, in two hormones that are required, we'll say, to for for the uh, sheep, we'll say, I suppose, to increase the number of eggs that are shed, we'll say, at the time of um, of uh, of heat, and also would say to get the the yews, would say, to release the eggs. So the two hormones are what, what's called FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone. So that the PMSG would say contains those two hormones. So the combination really of progesterone followed by the, P, the PMSG injection, you know, really, I suppose, controls the sheep's heat um, cycle and then induces, would say, the release, the, the, the number of eggs, would say, that will be released and the, uh, the release, actually the timing of the release of those eggs as well. David, that probably just leads us logically into the actual protocol we use or the time duration that the sponge is staying for. So typically, Kieran, the, the, the sponges will be left in situ for about 12 days. Now, they can be left up to 14 days, but generally what uh, most people do is that they leave them in situ for 12 days and then they're removed. The PMSG is, is administered, we'll say, at the time of removal. And you would expect those uh, yews, then if they're mature yews, They'll be turned out to the ram, we'll say, 48 hours later if they're yo hoggets, because the fact that those typically um, they ovulate or they release the egg uh, earlier, we'll say, the mature yos, they are typically allowed to the ram, we'll say, the rams are turned out at about 36 hours after the uh, sponges are removed. And that's going to get the optimum fertility from the rams at that period too. Yes, exactly. And I suppose the other thing, as you say, Kieran, uh, this time of the year now for most breeds, again, the rams, not alone the yews are out of season, but the rams equally are out, out of season. We'll say they're not at their maximum fertility. 
So then the O, I suppose, to RAM ratio would say would be smaller or lower than you would normally expect, would say, or um, even if you're synchronizing yours, would say within the normal kind of breeding season, which would be, you know, September, uh, October, November, that time of the year. So typically, you know, the advice would be about, you know, it was a mature ram of known fertility. And again, you know, I suppose now, nowadays, it's much easier, would say, to establish that given that there's, you know, ram, I suppose, breeding soundness evaluations would say are much more easily attainable, would say, than they were a number of years ago. But it's important to make sure that the ram would say obviously is fertile um, and about seven yos would say to um, to one ram would say for this time of the year if we're to let them out would say into july august if you if you were to synchronize your flock you know later in the year um in during the normal breeding season for example would say in early to um mid march or I'm sorry early to mid october for or uh, early to mid march lemming um you get away probably with about you know 10 to 12 euros per ram because again obviously the rams are at their peak would say of their um the same production would say there and their fertility at that time like it is quite hard on the yoda ram ratio it's very important you stay as close to them confines as you can because particularly in the case of an individual infertile ram it certainly could be damaging as well but like for a lot of flocks david there's a potential option it maybe split sponge removal or slightly stagger even sponge insertion in yos to maybe ease up uh, a little bit on that ram ratio Absolutely, Kieran. Obviously, we'll say it's it's a high cost, I suppose, system. So you want to get maximum fertility, and as you say there, you cannot compromise. Would we'll say on potential uh, fertility of the or a, or a lower pregnancy rate on the O's. Would we'll say by being too greedy, essentially, in terms of you know increasing that yo to ram ratio. So as I say, it's it re, even with rams of known fertility or mature rams, you know, would be very slow to advise anything beyond about seven uh, euros per ram at this time of the year. As I say. You know, as the season progresses later, you know, you can get up to probably 10, maybe even 12, would say, with a, a very vigorous virile ram. Um, so it's, it's, it is a high cost system, essentially, would say, and it's predicated on, I suppose, out of season lamb production and hopefully would say a higher price, would say, you know, particularly coming up to the Easter market, you know. Um, but again, obviously, everything has to go right, would say, there in terms of high pregnancy rates and high prolificity, would say, within the flock as well. If I just want to put you back on one point, and it ties in with that early season, the prolificity, the rate of PMSG that has given, how does that have an impact on the fertility level that's obtained, and does that change as the season progresses? Yes, Kieran, that's true. Um, the PMSG, up to a point, would say there's a, I suppose, a dose, positive dose response in that from about... And, and it's it's usually expressed in international units. Now, I I, I can't give, would we'll say, a dose in terms of meals because different, I suppose, um, different proprietary products, would say, have different concentrations. But typically, in the, in the units used are international units, and the response will be positive in terms of increasing the ovulation rate or potentially the number of the pregnancy rate um, in going from about 300 international units up to about 750 international units. And after that, then there doesn't seem to be any greater, I suppose, positive, would say, response. So essentially, you know, at, for out of season production, which is really, would say, at this time of the year now, into July, early August, you know, you'd be advising, would say, somewhere between about 500 and 750 um, international units per year. Um, equally, would say it's important, I suppose, to know the kind of prolificity, the baseline for prolificity of your flock and the type of breed of sheep that you have. The more prolific the yours, perhaps you don't you don't require quite as much, would say, uh, PMSG. But again, as I say, because of the costs, would say, involved um, in 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 the overall system, the fact that you know you're not going to utilise maybe grass as, as much, would say, in the system as you would, would say, um, in a mid-season lamb and flock. You know, it's important to have a high lamb and rate. So, to, you know, to dilute all those costs. So it's important to get a good return, we'd say, in terms of the, the number of lambs born and reared. It was certainly top of the moment. Really appreciate your insights on it. It's great catching up with you today. No problem, Kieran. Anytime. Thank you. OK, we're going to finish up at this point. Again, I'd like to thank David for giving up his time to be with us and giving us a better understanding of some of the basic aspects of synchronisation and why we do certain things within that synchronisation protocol. He highlighted some key aspects to achieving better results from it particularly that yoda ram ratio, and it's important we get this right. It's also important to note that both the sponges and the PMSG are prescription-only medicines and will need to be ordered in time from your veterinary surgeon to have them there for this breeding season. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates on the sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagas Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. 
Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.